from the previous lecture on continuous probability distributions recall some key points of normal distribution if x is a normal random variable then the probability curve of x is given by this the bell shaped curve symmetric about x equal to mu z equal to x minus mu or sigma is called standard normal variable from this you can also write x in terms of z what are mu and sigma mean and standard deviation of the normal random variable so clearly x equal to mu corresponds to z equal to 0 next in normal probability table the probabilities are given in terms of capital fz what is capital fz cumulative distribution function of the standard normal variable okay standard the z is standard normal variable right so capital fz1 if z1 is here is given by uh, means probability z less than or equal to z1 means this area and naturally probability of z lying in the range z1 to z2 is given by this fz2 this whole area minus fz1 So continuing from the previous lecture, let us see some more examples on normal distribution. Read this one. Given a normal distribution with mean mu equal to 40, sigma equal to 6, find the value of x that has 45% of the area to the left. 45% area to the left. This area say this area it is 0.45 so we need the corresponding value of x so if you are able to determine this value of z corresponding to 0.45 then we can use this relation to get the value of x because sigma and mu are already given so from the normal probability table you can find that probability z less than or equal to minus 0.30 is equal to 0.45 okay so using this relation we can find corresponding value of x how sigma is 6 z is z is minus point minus point 0.13 plus mu means sigma is 6, mu is 40. Simplify this, you will get the corresponding value of x. Yes, 6 times minus 0.13 plus 40. This turns out 39.22. What about the second part? 14% of the area to the left. not to the left, it is to the right, this area, say this area is 0.14. How to do this one? Same way, how much area is to the left? Right side area is given, total area under this curve is 1, this is 0.14, how much to the left? 0.86. So again, you need to see the value of Z such that this probability is 0.86 that you can see from the normal table it is 1.08 so again you can use this formula to simplify the value of x in this case x is 46.48 okay next example a certain type of storage battery lasts on average 3 years with a standard deviation of 0.5 year. Assuming that battery life is normally distributed, find the probability that a given battery will last less than 2.3 years. Here clearly mean is 3, standard deviation is 0.5. What is required? Probability x less than 2.3. So change it in terms of z and see the 
corresponding probability from the normal distribution table. The corresponding value of z is minus 1.3. This value you can see from the normal table. It is given as 0 0.0808. Next, an electrical firm manufactures light bulbs that have a life before burnout that is normally distributed with mean equal to 800 hours and a standard deviation of 40 hours. Find the probability that a bulb burns between 778 and 834 hours. Mean is in this problem what is mean? 800 standard deviation is 40. What is required? Probability of x lying in the range 778 and 834. 778 and 834. So again, mu and sigma are given, you can change it in terms of standard normal variable and then you can apply this formula to get the probability. See the solution here. In terms of z, the range is minus 0 0.55 to 0.85, then you can use this formula and get the probability. It is 0 0.5. 111. Okay. But naturally, you need to define x in the beginning. What is x here? The bulb burns for x hours. We will assume that in the beginning, x is your normal random variable. Next example in an industrial process, the diameter of a bulb bearing is an important measurement. The bias set specifications for the diameter to be 3 plus minus 0 0.01 centimeter. The implication is that no part falling outside these specifications will be accepted. It is known that in the process, the diameter of a ball bearing has a normal distribution with mean mu equal to 3 and standard deviation 0 0.005. On average, how many man manufactured ball bearings will be scrapped? Read the statement carefully. You can do this problem yourself. What is the criteria for scrapping the ball bearing? If the diameter is outside this range, correct? Means, suppose x is the diameter. If x is greater than 3.01, or x is less than 2.99. So what do you need? This probability, probability x greater than 3.01 plus probability x less than 2.99. You can find these two probabilities again using the standard normal variable and the normal probability table. Mu and sigma are already given. Just calculate it. You will find 0 0.456. It means on average 4.56% of the manufactured ball bearings will be scrapped. Next example. Gauges are used to reject all components for which a certain dimension is not within the specification 1.5 plus minus t. It is known that this measurement is normally distributed with mean 1.5 and standard deviation 0.2. Determine the value d such that the specifications cover 95% of the measurements. Specifications cover 95% of the measurements. So what do you need? The value of D such that probability of X lying in the range is 0.95. Correct. You can change it in terms of D. 
in terms of z in terms of z so in terms of z if you write and see the corresponding value of z so from the normal distribution table you will find that from z equal to minus 1.96 to plus 1.96 this area is 0.95 what does it mean 1.96 corresponds to this in terms of z so you can write this in terms of z using this standard normal variable formula in terms of x so 1.96 is equal to x value is 1.5 plus t minus mean value is 1.5 standard deviation is 0.2 so solving this you can get this easily b turns out 0.392 Okay. Next, Sebi Sales Inequality. It is a very useful inequality that gives an estimate of lower probability of the random variable to lie in certain interval. Read the statement, you will understand it. If x is a random variable with mean mu and variance sigma square, then probability of x, probability of x lying in the range mu minus k sigma to mu plus k sigma is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over k square. Notice that the Sebi-Severs inequality gives you the minimum probability for x lying in this case sigma interval. It doesn't give the exact probability. And also note that x is any random variable. It, it, it is not necessarily normal random variable. It is any random variable with mean, mu and standard deviation sigma. Okay, because it is applicable to any random variable, it is useful. It gives you at least the estimate of lower probability for x lying in the k sigma interval. Okay. You can verify it with a non distribution. If k is 2, then it is 2 sigma interval mu minus 2 sigma 2 mu plus 2 sigma. In general, this probability is always greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over 4, that means 0.75. In case x is a normal random variable, we know the exact probability. What is this? 0.9544. In case of normal distribution, we know the exact probability. You can see it is greater than 0.75. Let us do some examples based on service sales inequality. First one, number of students visiting a zoo on weekend is a random variable with mean 18 and standard deviation 2.5. Use service sales inequality to estimate the minimum probability that between 8 to 28 students will visit the zoo on a given weekend. mean is given standard deviation is given mean is eighteen standard deviation is two point five so according to services inequality you can write eighteen minus two point five k less than x less than eighteen plus two point five k is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over k square. You need the probability in the range 8 to 28. So what should we choose the value of k? Here it's understood that x is the number of students visiting the zoo. Okay? You always need to define your random variable. Yes, so what should we choose k? 
to get this range j equal to 4 yes if you choose j equal to 4 the range becomes a to 28 and the lower bound for the probability is 0 0.9375 next example if x is a geometric random variable with the density fx equal to 1 over 2 power x find probability of x in the range where mod x minus 2 is less than 2 means x varies in the range 0 to 4 or you can say find the probability for the value of x from 1 to 3 okay so it is strictly less than also use Chebyshev's inequality to estimate this probability so first first let us use the, uh, the geometric distribution to get the probability x lying in this range means 0 to 4 so x has three values 1 to 3 so substitute here and the probability from geometric distribution directly 0.875 this is the exact probability suppose you estimate the same using the Chebyshev's inequality so naturally you first need the mean and standard deviation in order to use Chebyshev's inequality so what is mean in case of geometric distribution to recall it is 1 over p and standard deviation is q over p square what is p in this problem 1 over 2 q is also 1 over 2 so if you simplify this is 2 and this turns out square root of 2 okay so according to services inequality you can write probability of x in the range 2 minus root 2 sigma less than x less than 2 plus root 2 root sigma here it is k sigma value is root 2 this is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over k square so you need probability in which range 0 to 4 so what should we choose k here it's clear that we should choose k equal to root 2 so if we use this value of k, the probability of x in the range 0 to 4 is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. Okay. So what did you get from geometric distribution? Exit probability 0 0.875, which is clearly greater than 0 0.5. So again I repeat, Chebyshev's inequality doesn't give exit probability. It gives the minimum value of probability of x lying in the k sigma interval but at least it gives an estimate secondly it is applicable to any random variable with non mean and standard deviation so that is the advantage next approximation of binomial distribution by normal distribution read it we can approximate binomial distribution probability using normal distribution under these conditions either p less than or equal to 0.5 and np greater than 5 or p greater than 0.5 and n into 1 minus p greater than 5 though these are not very hard and fast in, in some problems we can get a very good approximation without this rule also okay but of course you will get a good approximation if these conditions are satisfied so idea is we can approximate binomial distribution probability using normal distribution okay so see this example if x is the number of heads in a toss of four fair coins, toss of four fair coins, so what is n here? 4, p 
पी पी वन बाय टू बिकॉज व्हाट इज आस्ट आफ्टर दिस फाइंड प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स इन दिस रेंज यूजिंग बायोनोमल एज वेल एज नोमल सो एक्स इज द नंबर ऑफ एक्स सो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ गेटिंग ए हेड इन एनी ट्रायल इज वन ओवर टू एंड क्यू इज आल्सो वन ओवर टू x is the number of heads so x can take which values 0 1 2 3 4 and, and you can write the pmf also for the binomial distribution for different values of x for 0 it is 1 by 16 4 is 0 over 16 right there are four pair points total number of cases is 16 so 4 is 0 over 16 then 4 is 1 over 16 4c2 is how much 4c0 over 16 this is the value for probability value corresponding to x equal to 0 then 4c1 over 16 4c2 over 16 4c3 over 16 and 4c4 over 16 these are various values You can see here also. Four C zero means one over sixteen. Four C one means four over sixteen. Four C two means six over sixteen. So areas of these rectangles, these green rectangles, are exactly these values of the probabilities corresponding to different values of x. Okay. You see the base of the area is unity one. Height is given by one over sixteen in first case, second case, four over sixteen, third, six over sixteen. So areas of these green rectangles give you exactly the probabilities for various values of x. So what is the probability for x from one to three from binomial distribution first? Just add the three. If you add the three properties, this, 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 and simplify, you get 0.875. So this is the exact probability from binomial distribution. Now suppose you want to approximate using the normal distribution. So draw the normal probability curve. You need not to draw in the problems, but for explanation it is shown here. But for plotting the normal probability curve, what do you need? Mean and standard deviation. What is mean of binomial distribution? NP and standard deviation root NP cube. So what is NP? What is NP in this particular case? Multiply the two. n is 4 p is 1 by 2 it is 2 and root n p q also you can find by simplifying the thing is that you know mu and sigma so you know your normal probability curve okay you can plot it now geometrically if you see if you want to approximate area for x from 1 to 3 then then i need to i need to add the areas add this total area or you can say i need to find this total area from x equal to 1 to 3 under this under this blue probability curve of the normal random variable x right but if i compare this area with the exact area given by the three middle rectangles then i see that some area is left or you can say if you directly find the area under this normal probability curve from 1 to 3 then you see that these areas the left out areas to the left of 1 and to the right of 3 are not covered if you compare with the rectangles area and also the areas here under the curve these three portions are left out when we compare with the rectangles 
So to compensate that, we make a half unit correction to the left of one and to the right of three. Means for using a normal probability, normal distribution approximation, instead of x from one to three, we make it from 0.5 to 3.5. Note this point. Because if you do it from 1 to 3 and compare with the rectangles, these areas are left. Okay. So, to just to balance the things, the approach is make a half unit correction on both sides. Now, this you can change in terms of z using standard normal variable formula x minus mu over sigma mu is known sigma you can calculate substitute here you can change it in terms of z and then use the normal probability table to get the final probability okay you will get 0.8664 you see both are almost the same so normal distribution gives a very good approximation to binomial distribution Let's see some more problems, it will be clear. The probability that a patient recovers from a rare blood disease is 0.4. If 100 people are known to have contracted this disease, what is the probability that fewer than 30 survive? So clearly here P is 0.4. N is 100, let's say X is the number of people that survive out of 100. So what we need? We need the probability that fewer than 30 survive. So we need probability X less than 30. So if you go with binomial, you have to add from 0 to 29. But we want to approximate it using the normal distribution. So you, we need to make half unit correction. Means probability x less than 29.5. Okay. You can put equal to also, you know, in continuous equality or inequality. Means if you put equal to sign, it's fine. If you do not put, still it's fine because that is integration. Okay, so again you change it in terms of z, what is mean here and p and uh, sigma is root and p, q is 0.6. So using these values you can determine mu and sigma, change it in terms of z and then see the probability from normal distribution table. See the calculations are given here, this is the final answer. Mu is written, sigma is written, half unit correction is taken, after that z is calculated and then from the normal distribution table you can see this one. See the next problem, a multiple choice quiz has 200 questions each with 4 possible answers. of which only one is correct, what is the probability that sheer guesswork yields from 25 to 30 correct answers for the 80 of the 200 problems about which the student has no knowledge? So P is the probability of correct answer. So how much it is? Four possible answers, one is correct, so 0.25. How many problems are to be attempted? 80. So n is 80. And what probability is required for x from 25 to 30? Okay. So it's simple. Make a half unit correction using normal distribution. Find this probability. So again n and p are known, you can determine mu and sigma and then change x in terms of z, you can see the full solution here. Mu and sigma are calculated using these n and p 
after that half unit correction is made you can see here 24.5 to 30.5 corresponding z values are seen and then the final probability is written it is 0.1196 You have already learned the continuous probability distributions which are uniform distribution, normal distribution. Let us see the next one, the gamma distribution. It is a very important distribution having a lot of applications, especially lifetime, lifetime problems where you are given some component say electrical component you want to determine its probability for how much time it will survive so we'll see the problems based on gamma distribution see its pdf first a continuous random variable x is said to have gamma distribution with parameters alpha and beta if its density function reads as this what is gamma alpha here the gamma function Hope you are familiar with this. The integral 0 to infinity e power minus x, x power alpha minus 1 dx. This integral is known as gamma function. Okay, now we will be thinking how do we get this kind of formula for the PDF of gamma distribution. It arises naturally. It arises naturally from a practical situation. We will consider that. Let's see its special case first. From that you will understand. Before that you can see its moment generating function, mean and variance. You know the standard formulas for finding moment generating function, mean and variance. Using those formula you can do these derivations yourself. But it's good to recall this directly because these can be used in the problems. Yes, this is the special case, which is also very important. In gamma distribution, if we choose alpha equal to 1, then the density function reads as this. Now it has only one parameter beta. So fx equal to 1 over beta e power minus x over beta, where x and beta both are positive. This is the density function of exponential distribution. Exponential, you understand by the name. It involves exponential function. Moment generating function is this, mean is beta, variance is beta square. Let us see an example of exponential distribution, then you will understand how do we get the gamma distribution. Let lambda be the mean number of events per unit time. Y be the Poisson random variable and t be the time random variable denoting the time t till the occurrence of the first Poisson event. Zero to t in this time interval no Poisson event occurs. And what is t? t is the time denoting till the or t is the time till the occurrence of the first Poisson event. So if you are saying that no Poisson event occurs till time t means what is the probability of happening the first Poisson event? Probability t greater than t because till t there is no Poisson event means y is 0. So both these things are equal. Till time t no Poisson event happens, no Poisson event occurs. So probability t greater than t is same as probability y equal to 0 because t is the time of occurrence of first Poisson event and y is the number of Poisson events. So both these probabilities should be same, right? But this we can calculate using the PMF of Poisson random variable. Do you recall? The probability distribution of Poisson random variable. 
एफ एक्स इक्वल टू ई पावर माइनस लेमडा एस लेमडा एस पावर एक्स पावर एक्स फैक्टोरियल एम आई राइट हियर एक्स इज जीरो वी आर डिनोटिंग द रेंडम वेरिएबल बाय वाई सो दिस इज जीरो लेमडा इज एस चेच एंड एस इज द साइज ऑफ द मीडियम और साइज ऑफ द इंटरवल among which you are seeing the poise agents so using this formula you are getting this property it is e power minus lambda t finally okay so probability t greater than t is this so what is probability t less than equal to t because this will become the cdf of The random variable t it is one minus e power minus lambda t, and from CDF you can easily get the probability density function. Just differentiate it. F prime t it is lambda times e power minus lambda. T. You see it is matching with this one with lambda equal to one over beta. Matching or not? Yes, it is matching. and this is your small f t means the the probability density function of the random variable t so here the random variable t exactly follows the exponential distribution okay with the parameter beta where beta is equal to 1 over lambda you can see the calculations here So clearly, t is an exponential random variable with beta equal to one over lambda. Now see the connection between beta and lambda. Beta is one over lambda. So if beta, if lambda is the number of mean number of occurrences, that then what is one over uh, uh, this uh, beta? It is the mean time between the events. Right, time period is reciprocal of frequency. You know it from physics. Right. So what is t here? The random variable t. Notice that time for the occurrence of first Poisson event. Time for the occurrence of first Poisson event. Then such a random variable follows exponential distribution. Okay. what if t is the time time for alpha th poise event then t follows this distribution it can be proved okay see the lecture notes so let me denote the random variable by x here to match with this expression if x is the time for the occurrence of alpha th poisson event and beta is the mean time between two poisson events then the random variable x exactly follows this distribution okay the density of this random variable is given by this expression okay so gamma distribution naturally appears from this practical situation now let us do some problems based on exponential and gamma distribution remember that exponential distribution is a special case of the gamma distribution read this suppose that a system contains a certain type of component whose time in years to failure is given by t The random variable t is modeled nicely by the exponential distribution with mean time to failure beta equal to five. Beta is five. So lambda you understand is one over five. Okay. If five of these components are installed in different systems, what is the probability that at least two are still functioning at the end of eight years? if you look at the later part of the problem 2 out of 5 it's a binomial distribution problem isn't it so 
So if you know the probability of functioning of one component after eight years, then you can apply binomial distribution. Probability of functioning of one component after eight years. Calculate this probability because it follows exponential distribution that, that you can integrate for t greater than 8. Okay. See here. This is exactly the formula of exponential distribution with beta equal to 5. Recall the exponential distribution formula. It is 1 over beta e power minus x over beta. Beta is 5 here and instead of x we are denoting the random variable by t. So it's fine. Integrate this from a to infinity for if you need this property. So you get it approximately 0.2. So let us this denote this probability by p. So you know the survival probability of one component after eight years. So what is the requirement in the problem? What is the probability that at least two are still functioning after eight years out of five? So n is five. At least two means you need probability x greater than or equal to 2. If x denotes the number of components still functioning after 8 years, x greater than or equal to 2. So using binomial you can do it. x greater than or equal to 2 means you can also do it like this. Probability x equal to 0. 1 minus probability at x equal to 0 minus probability at x equal to 1. n and p are known to you. So you can take calculate these properties using binomial PMF and this is the calculation that you get in the end this is the final answer okay next exponential distribution has memoryless property it is a very useful property in some simple words, you can understand it like this. Mathematically, it can be shown that if a component survives for t naught hours, then its probability for surviving additional t hours is the same in exponential distribution. It is practically applicable in the problems where a component has no wear and tear. Let me give you an example. Suppose you have bought an electric bulb from the market okay so its lifetime its lifetime doesn't depend on how much hours it has survived earlier correct the bulb is lying in the shop let's say for six months you have bought it installed it in your house now it is working whether it depends on the six months that it was lying in the shop? No. So the point is that if a component survives for T naught hours, and so then its probability doesn't depend on that survival time. This kind of this kind of situation is applicable in the practical problems where there is no wear and tear. Okay, the lifetime of the bulb ends with some fault or something like that means the, the material it is made up of, it doesn't depend on that. So in this kind of situation, exponential distribution is extremely useful because it has memoryless property. Now see next example. Suppose that Telephone calls arriving at a particular switch port follow a Poisson process with an average of 5 calls coming per minute. Average is given, lambda is 5. Okay, so beta is 1 over 5. What is the probability that up to a minute will elapse by the time 2 calls have come into the switch port? 
up to a minute with ellipse. Probability t less than 1. By the time two calls have elapsed, the number of Poisson events is 2, alpha is 2. Alpha given, beta given, t is gamma random variable here. So you can calculate this easily. Up to, you can put equal to also, doesn't matter. So 0 to 1, you are using exactly the gamma probability distribution. Alpha is 2, beta is 1 over 5, so you can use this formula for getting the probability of t less than or equal to 1. So integrate this from 0 to 1. Okay. Final answer is 0 0.96. Next example. In a biochemical study with rats, a dose response investigation is used to determine the effect of the dose of a toxicant on their survival time. The toxicant is one that is frequently discharged into the atmosphere from jet fuel. For a certain dose of the toxicant, the study determines that the survival time in weeks has a gamma distribution with alpha equal to 5, beta equal to 10. What is the probability that a rat survives no longer than 60 weeks? No longer than 60 weeks. So what do you need here? If you are denoting the random variable x or t, it's up to you. If you are denoting it by t, then you need probability x less than or equal to 60. No longer than 60 weeks. Alpha and beta are already given. And it is written that gamma distribution is applicable here. So you can just do the calculations. As I said, you can denote it by t also. So find this integration to get this answer. Okay. Next, it is known from previous data that the length of time in months between customer complaints about a certain product is a gamma distribution with alpha equal to 2, beta equal to 4. Changes were made to tighten quality control requirements. Following these changes, 20 months passed before the first complaint. Does it appear as if the quality control tightening was effective? What is here? The Time for the complaints follow gamma distribution with alpha equal to 2, beta equal to 4. Okay, changes were made for tightened quality control. After that, what is noticed? 20 months passed before the first complaint. So, can it be considered that quality control is effective? You can judge it by finding probability of the complaint after 20 months. After 20 months. Alpha, beta are given. T greater than 20 means integrate that PDF of gamma distribution from 20 to infinity. So you get 0 0.04. Okay. So what is the probability of getting a complaint after 20 months? Only 4%. It's only 4%, very less. So you can say that quality control was effective. Because up to 20 months, no complaint is received. After 20 months, this is the probability. So very less probability. So you can interpret like that. Next example, the time y in years before a major repair is required for a certain washing machine is characterized by this density function. It's clearly exponential distribution. The machine is a bargain if it is unlikely to require a major repair before the sixth year. 
the machine is a bargain if no complaint is there or no uh, major repair is required before the sixth year then it is a bargain otherwise it is not a bargain it's not a good deal so first find the probability for y greater than 6 that you can find just integrate this fy from 6 to infinity so the, what is this probability y greater than 6 probability of getting a major repair after 6 years so let's calculate this it's 0 0.223 0 0.223 so what is the probability of getting a major repair before 6 years means during the first 6 years it is 0.777 it's very high so machine is not a bargain this is the probability of getting major repair after 6 years that is less but before it is too much ok so it is not a bargain second what is the probability of getting a major repair in the first year itself so then you need probability y less than 1 that you can calculate it's 0 0.221 the second part is ok there is another special case of gamma distribution that is called chi square distribution ok so what is it it is special case of gamma distribution with beta equal to 2 and alpha equal to gamma by 2 hope you know that this is capital gamma this is small gamma what is gamma here being some positive integer known as degrees of freedom so in the pdf of gamma distribution substitute beta equal to 2 alpha equal to gamma over 2 this is the expression and this is what this is the PDF of chi-square distribution. The mean and variance of chi-square distribution are these, so that you can easily derive. Mean is gamma, variance is 2 gamma. We will not do problems on this distribution. Just I told you that it's a special case of gamma distribution, but you can see here its graph for various values of the degree of freedom as you increase the degrees of freedom you see what happens here it goes to the normal distribution anyway there are further details also we will not go into those details but here you can see it's a very important distribution the chi-square distribution plays a vital role in statistical inference it has considerable applications in both methodology and theory. It's an important component of statistical hypothesis testing and estimation. So topics dealing with sampling distributions, analysis of variance, non-parameter statistics involve extensive use of chi-square distribution. But as I said, we will not do problems on this. Just I've introduced you to this particular distribution. Okay. So with this we have covered all basic concepts of chapter 3 that is of continuous probability distributions. Thank you.